So first of all, I want to thank Andrew Martineau for hosting such a phenomenal event. It's absolutely wonderful. It's a first. It's fantastic. And I have to be honest, I taught you well. <laughs> you did, you did. And I think it's really great. I want to thank uh, the property owners for hosting such a thing like this. Ocean Land Investments, yes. correct. It's a beautiful space and uh, kind of gives you an idea of how art integrates with uh, an environment. So I'm very pleased. And uh, just to say my own thoughts about your properties, um, you know, when you live in a high-rise building, you get lost. When you have these things, it's very, very special. Yes, and I think that that's a real kudo to the builder and right. to the vision of the company, actually, to allow people to have homes that are in smaller buildings and still to give that Miami flavor. And uh, I was just uh, telling someone that living here in South Florida, you can meet anybody, literally. And you can't do that in New York because people are so isolated. They're, they're in silos, they're behind computers and big buildings and you can't do it. But here is a wonderful way to have a great life. So, and you're offering that. So I think that that's pretty, that's pretty good. I will so, definitely let the developer know your thoughts. Please, You'll be do. Back <laughs> Please do, because you know, I mean, it's it's when you live with art, it's it's in an environment, and uh, so this little piece, I'll start here. Double double disguise was created in 1979, a long time ago, and uh, I'm known as the father of digital art for the last 40 years. I'm also the official artist of last year's Grammy Awards, which I created the Grammy statue. And what that means is that I literally wrapped their five and a half foot, one of a kind only, because everyone says, oh, did everyone get one? No, everyone got like a small little gold <laughs> one, gold plated. Mine is five and a half feet tall and resides at the Recording Academy in Los Angeles. But they photographed it, became the poster, the VIP tickets, the invitation, the cover of the program guide, absolutely everything. And it was really a big thrill because there are 30,000 of the greatest musicians in the world at the Staples Center and one artist. And that was a really special thing to be participating in and be part of. So I had. John Legend in front of me, Madonna behind me, uh, Ariel Grande behind that, and uh, Paul McCartney was over there signing a couple of things. It was really just an amazing experience. So, but it all comes from this kid who created digital art in 1979, because he had a vision. And the vision was that digital art could replace a painting could replace an Impressionist painting, could be part of the timeline of art history. This is what a 19-year-old kid said to himself. And that kid was right, I have to say. And in uh, 1989, I replaced Van Gogh's irises at the Joan Whitney Payson Museum in Portland, Maine, which was then sold to uh, Alan Bond, an industrialist, at Sotheby's for $53 million. And they replaced it with uh, uh, a show of my work. And I had the whole museum. So it was really, in 1989, no one even heard of digital art, let alone really understand it. And this is 10 years prior. So it was done on a machine prior to Bill Gates and Steve Jobs ever thinking about digital technology. And it's a very special piece. And I have to say, in this room, you're going to see things that have not been out of the vault in 30 years. And that's what makes it special, because I thought Andrew deserved some really good quality work to present to the public to kick off this thing. So anyway, we have this. The can, next can you explain like the process at that time, you know, before the computers, how, how like, this, yeah. this, this piece okay. was created? 
well, not to date myself by old technology and saying, oh my God, that guy's old. You know, because you can do everything more or less on your phone these days. You know, I mean, unfortunately, that is a truth. But <clears throat> having said that, um, the way that this has worked is there was a black and white video camera on a person, and that thing went through an, uh, uh, a big machine, and you need, you need knobs and buttons and wires, probably 10 times the size of this particular room, where all these wires were being routed to this main system, and I was able to tweak the picture in certain ways from gray values, so I can insert colors in certain places where they weren't. That's how it all kind of worked. And to make this juxtaposition between the two faces was like a switcher that, that, is, that was called a keyer. And then you put one image on top of the other in 1979. So this is before VHS, before you can go and rent a tape. Uh, 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 yes, before a VCR, before, before any of that stuff. Um, you, uh, we used one inch reel to reel tape on, on reels in order to capture these pictures. So then the final thing was to take a photograph, put it on a tripod, and take a picture off the screen using a still camera. Now the trick about that is that there was a refresh rate going, so you had to shoot this picture three times in order not to create this giant bar that flashed along the image. So this is really revolutionary. This is really the, the, like the, the beginnings of everything that's ever happened to me. And you were 19? I was 19 years old. Wow. Which so I'll what get. was your history before then? You just like well, I was an underage you. drinker. Something <laughs> 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 very deep. <laughs> I came out of my mother. The story is, I came out of